This may look a little bit complicated and weird, but really it's not because all the clocks are going in. Well, first of all, we have clocks coming out and then they're basically just circling around until, well, they're done. And I will have a ton of clocks of, what are they called again? Watches of flowing time. There we go. All of which I can use for all my singularity automation. But anyway, while that is doing that, welcome back to Stoneblock 3. We are very well on our way to completing all of the singularities. In fact, there's one missing right there, which is the polonium singularity, which we made quite recently. We are only missing three singularities. Then we're missing the ultimate stew and the cosmic meatballs. I think we can automate quite a lot of this today. So let's let's just jump into it and see how much of this we can actually do because these two singularities right here I think are going to be pretty easy to set up. The cosmic meatballs, all these ingredients are EMCable, so this should be really, really easy to set up, I hope at least. Uh um, stuff are breaking. Why why stuff breaking over here? Um so these are done. Okay, so that's great. Well, anyway, I'm going to take these and I'm going to put them into my backpack because I will be needing quite a lot of those. I want to put up a bunch of watches of flowing time for all the different singularities just so things can generate a little bit faster. But the first thing that I think we should look at is the Uranite Singularity, which takes Uranite, of course, which we can uh, get raw Uranite from crushing crushed Deep Slate, and we can get crushed Deep Slate by hammering Deep Slate, and we can get Deep Slate. Uh, well, it's emc so that is that sorted. So first I need an EMP EMC link. I'm just going to use this personal EMC link that I have laying around to generate the Deep Slate. Then I am going to be needing a hammer machine, which I think going with the uh, the well the highest tier possible, we, we might as well do that. So all I need is to make a hammer and then go ahead and make the auto iron auto hammer. Put that in there and put this in. Of course, we're going to be needing a golden hammer. And just like that, put that back in. We need then a diamond hammer and then diamond auto hammer completed. Netherite auto hammer, netherite hammer, all of this is easy, just a bunch of different clicks. There we go. So we can now feed uh, deep slate into this, which will then give us crushed deep slate, which is that. Then we will have to crush uranite. So we need to make some crushing wheels and some water wheels. I'm just really quickly going to go head on over here and add andesite alloy to our brand new storage system. And by the way, I was told that it is probably a very good idea to, in these external storages, set them to access type insert extract only. That way, when we put things back into our storage, they won't go in and then get destroyed and turned into EMC. So thank you for uh, that, because I hadn't realized that. <laughs> you know, I could retro... F Hold on, I could... I could turn this, it, because we're not using this anymore, uh, this would normally... Can I not fly? Normally we would have a uh, cobblestone being generated here, crush your gravel. But maybe I can use it to create raw uranite. And then transport the uranite down to... Yeah, I think we might do that, so we're not even going to use this actually. I think we're just gonna... Just gonna re remake this. Hmm, yeah, see, I did a, I did the mistake because I only changed one of the external thingies, so when I put this back in, as you can see, it just got instantly taken out, and that is because this is still set to insert and extract. In fact, all of these needs to be put into extract-only mode, otherwise it will potentially destroy your items and turn them into EMC, which is not exactly what we want. So there we go, that is that done. Let us go ahead and set this up now. So I'm going to be placing a chest, I think. Let's place a chest right there. And then we're going to have the crushed, the crushed deep slate. So we need deep slate into hammer. And I think we can place that there. I think that's going to automatically go into the chest. And so maybe we'll break this, place this here. Uh, you need, need deep slate first of all, of which I don't have any. This is not deep slate, this is smooth basalt, not what I need. This is not deep slate, this is all andesite. Then it would have to be maybe further down, maybe. Aha, yes. Perfect, okay. Day is saved. Teleportation initiated. 
And let me just make sure that we never run out of Deep Slate again. Now we place the Deep Slate into there, and I think we go ahead and do this. Set this to Output. This is getting Deep Slate indeed. I'm just going to put the Ultimate Pipe Upgrade in there. So you are now getting Crushed Deep Slate. This is then going to be set to Output. Now I need to take this actually. Need to change this and change it into something else. Because now what we're going to get is raw uranite, and in order to turn it into uranite, we need to smelt it. So I think one of these furnaces is probably going to do the trick. So make a normal furnace, then we go ahead and make an iron furnace, then we go ahead and make a gold furnace, then we make a diamond furnace, then we make an emerald furnace, and then we make an obsidian furnace, and then we make the netherite furnace. I think Thing. That is what we have here, except this is using power. Um, yes, power is probably going to be the easiest way of doing things. A, ba oh, a basic ender cell is not going to cut it, is it? Good thing we don't need to worry about that. I can just go ahead and get a little bit of coal here. And we're going to use a refined DMC link. So, we can actually go ahead and put a furnace right here. Then we can power set furnace using some pipes. We go ahead and put this, put this here, put this here. No promises, server. And then place this here, put this in there. Set this to output, like that. Okay, I think I got it. So we have the hover pointing into the furnace. We have a pipe right here, which is set to only take raw uranium and put it into the trash can. Then we get raw uranite in like this. From the from the from the back fly <laughs> like this and then fuel is coming in from the right and then this is being supposedly outputted on the right as well right final adjustment coal here being inserted on the right output here into and the drawer and well this doing that I think it should know I, I think it should work now only one way to find out though all right gonna place this here I'm going to store this frequency and then I'm going to put that frequency into that one because our polonium pellet is going to go there and I think this should work I'm gonna put that in and yeah I, th I think this should work right we'll get back to this and hopefully we will have more of these when we return because now we are going to be making the Nitro Crystal Singularity and that is either going to be easier or a whole lot worse. Because we need Nitro Crystals in order to make this. Quite a few might I add and also going to be needing quite a lot of power to do this. But to make the Nitro Crystals we need to be energizing with 20 million FE per 16 block of blazing crystal, two blocks of redstone, and one nether star. And we are not going to be using this down here. I need to make an ender cell specifically for this, and then also uh, store, yeah, I need some good energizing rods, which is going to take quite a bit. Max input output is 4,000 FE a tick. That's not going to be enough, because we need to store up at 20 million. I think getting to the highest would be the fastest, but maybe getting like Niartic is going to be enough, but I need to be doing a ton of crafting for this. All right, after a lot of crafting, I now have nine energizing rods, Niartic energ energizing rods to be specific. Next, I'm going to be needing another energy cell which is currently charging for... because... something. Uh, and I'm going to be needing energy cables that can actually keep up with the input of these energizing rods. And there we go, that is a Niartic Ender Cell because it has a max input and output of 100,000. We have nine Niartic Energizing Rods which each take an input of 10,000, so that's 90,000. So this should be able to keep up, and this right here uh, it's not going to be able to keep up. However, what I do want to make with this is going to be these, the Elite Universal Cables, which can carry over 400,000 FE a tick, which definitely should be able to keep up <laughs> with the setup. So if we just search Elite, uh, that should have gone through, right? Elite, Elite, Elite. 
Let's see, Italy. Yeah, there we go. That's the two billion I was looking for. Now, just before we set this up, let's see if we have had any. Ooh, okay, so we do have Uranite. Uh, right is in fuel. Output is left, which is correct. And I don't have any filters on this. I forgot again that it has to go in from the top. That's really annoying. I don't understand why it can't be inputted from the from the bottom. But okay, some re-engineering has to happen here. Going to try this instead. Uh, not with that though. And then just do this. Yes, that works. That way I can have the output here and have, not that, I can have the ender drawer set to be right there and that's that's obviously wrong these need to go in there and just like that we have our first uranite singularity right there that means i need to go ahead and take this uh store frequency then run over here and then set it to there boom our first uranite singularity and hopefully we'll have the red one as well in just a bit because we have everything that we need. I'm just thinking where to set this up. Also, it, that actually happened not at a pretty decent rate. But anyway, I'm wondering where to set this up because part of me wants to put it all the way down in uh, by the reactor in one of these rooms. But part of me also kind of want to have it like back here for some reason. Like I think that would be kind of cool. I know it's not really up to my use my normal planning that I had done, but I think this is fine. Anyway, we need to think ahead a little bit here. We need to have a few um, EMC links. So three, I think, should do it. One for the redstone, one for the nether star, one for the blaze mesh. And that's a thing, actually. Ooh. Uh, in order to get the block of blazing crystal, we need to energize the blaze mesh. Um, so that's actually two energizing stations that I need to work on, which I think means I need to make uh a, a lot more things um the easiest is that that one um <laughs> i need to make nine more energizing rods and one more ender cell this is a lot of crafting you know one one two two three three four four five five six six seven seven eight eight nine nine and just like that I have made a lot more of these energy rods. <laughs> wow. That was quite a process, but it was worth it. Now we can set things up. Right after refueling this, it's actually going quite well, this. Pretty happy with this. I like it. Anyway, even though I would love to have it here, I think we probably should go ahead and set this up down here right after figuring out... I think that I think I think that's better. I think that's much better. In fact, let's see how close we are to the next polonium pellet. Uh, I think it's this one. Ooh, almost there. Almost there, you know. But we'll get it eventually. Eventually, we'll have our first polonium pellet. It just takes a very long time. But it is time to no. This hammer is too small. It is time to expand. I think this might be big enough. Maybe? If in doubt, go bigger. All right, so to make the nitro crystal, again, we need to uh, energize these four things right here. So first off, we need to sort this out. So energizing, I'm also actually, now that I remember it, I am going to be needing some laser IO things. I'm also going to then be needing some item cards, specifically, oh, I can't stack them. I think this is literally everything that I need. Right, well, let's start this off. We have an ender cell. Then we're going to be having some power and these boots off. We're going to have the energizer right here, actually, I think if I, yes, do that there. Then we're going to be having energizer right there and there. And then, no, wait, I need to move it out a bit. Because I want rod, 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 corner, rod, 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 corner, rod, 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 corner, rod, rod, rod. Yes, perfect. That means that this is going to be right in the center. And that is then going to be fed 
a from the refined EMC links. We're going to have one. Well, let's place a node here first of all, like that. Then place this on top. And then I think I'm going to have to drop something. I don't want to drop anything. Let's place these then. Right here. One, two, three. There we go. That definitely cleared up the inventory. Next, I need to get a blaze mesh, which for some reason, there we go. Blaze mesh, add that to this. And I think I'm also going to be needing to set this up. So item card, insert. I, I think I need to do that there and then that. No, this one at the top needs to be set to extract, exact, and then transfer amount one. Uh, that, that, that's not that's not how that's not how it's supposed to do it. <laughs> We're going to have a counting filter in, and then one like that. And I think. That is going to do it. So that's going to be feeding it one. It's going to finish it and then it's going to wait until it is actually done, which is going to be in this chest by having this set to that. Beautiful. Okay, this part is now automated. Look at that block of placing. Awesome. Right. Now I need to just set up the next one, which should be pretty much the same here 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 and what oh three six nine twelve I am missing six of these that's not fun yeah <laughs> this is just this in a loop now because all of them are finished <laughs> oh that's funny I need to I needed to set a filter but yeah that's that's actually funny all right there we go Finally, I have all the energizing rods required and I just need to keep an eye out on. Yeah, yeah, that's draining power very fast, which is a bit worrying. I need to. Uh, not all of these are actually working at maximum efficient. Oh, yeah, they are. They are. When this is empty, it means they're working at 100% efficiency. I need to expand my power production because Oh, I need to actually do it now because this is gonna be bad if I don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that, okay. If I just stop this real quick. Okay. Now we're storing power again after I removed this one. So maybe it is just that one setup that is completely draining everything. Uh, let me try and place it back down. I mean, they are using a lot of power, these, so... That's different power setup. Yep, that's draining fast, that's draining fast, that's draining very, very fast. <laughs> right, this is going to be needing its own power network, this right here. But for now, I can finalize setting this up. So, we will have refined EMC link. I'm going to be needing some more. I will need to go up for that. Right. Laser node right here. Actually, I'm need, going to need quite a few more. Right. I'm going to have a chest on top of this with these right here. Elite logistical transporters on top, like so. Then we're going to be having these refined right there. Then I'm going to be needing a nether star. Just one. Redstone. Two of those, because then what I need to do is extract yes this is supposed to be there Ex no yeah no take this out put the extract card in and then in this one we want to add a counting filter need to add two blocks of redstone one of this and then we need to add one uh, wow okay yeah we have made quite a few and then we need to make get that one in there and then that is all in the item card, so we can add that to this. We set this to generate nether stars, blocks of redstone, and, well, we're not going to be needing this because that is going to be moving over. Ooh, actually, setting this one to be here would probably look cooler. So two redstone blocks again. And then set these to, well, I can't set them to output just yet. Set this to output, go up and into this. 
set this to drain. Same here. And it's getting everything that it needs into this chest. And I think maybe I'm doing this wrong. Yeah, I'm following these up wrongly. Put this here, put that there. Oh, I didn't, <laughs> didn't put the <laughs> counting filter in. Let's take all this out. One of that, two of them, one of that. Boom. It's making it. It's making it. Let's put it like this. Let's take uh, uh, this right here and chest. And then just gotta change this to. There we go. Right, that should be making now the thing that we need. Awesome. Only assume now is that I need to be generating a lot more power than I originally expected, which um, I'm not sure how to do. I may have a plan for the power situation. Stay tuned. Insert ultimate pipe upgrade. Do this. Yes. All 64 lapidary dynamos should be working at 100% efficiency. All of them without exception. All of them has diamonds. We should be generating more power than we... I, I don't think we're ever going to be, well, using this much power for this one setup. But you never know. I think this is pretty well. Yeah, I, I like this setup. It's easy. It's free. It's free power. It's, it's free power, essentially. Also, it doesn't make any noise. And... That should be giving us all the power that we need to get this thing going. And I can do the final bits and pieces that I didn't get to do before, which is to finalize the setup for the Neutronium Compressor. There we go, that is all set up. Just waiting for that to finish. In the meantime, I can go ahead and set up this glass. And that is this machine complete. I actually really like how that looks. All right, let's put those together. Crisis, energy crisis averted as well. We should be saving up. Yes, we are indeed saving up. I just need to get my oak plank to fill in that space right there. Let us... Oh yeah, I need, I need to quickly empty these out. Otherwise, they're going to keep going in circles, which is not what we need. Uh, I could also... Oh dear. I don't know which ones of these are... Yep. 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 Yeah, this is <laughs> this is tricky to keep up with. Let's see how this one is coming along. Ooh, we already have three Uranite Singularities and we are moving towards the fourth. That is beautiful right there. Let's go ahead and check this down here. How close are we to finishing this? Let's get rid of these boots now. 82%. I will be right back when this is almost done. 99% almost there. This operation should produce 16 of those shards which are being sent directly into the Neutronium Compressor. That is the setup complete, and yeah, this is... I think this is fine. I think this will work just fine, because it only takes that little at a time. There will always be, be space in this. So yeah, that is that singularity completed. Of course, we need to wait for it to arrive, of which I can go ahead and store that frequency. don't know if it works if it's empty. Storing the frequency, but I'm going to store it right there. And is that? That's our Polonium Pellet Singularity, our first one, ladies and gentlemen, just arrived. I thought something was off there or looked different. That is awesome. We are one singularity away from having all the singularities completely automated. So while this is happening over here in its own section and we're waiting for these for the first nitro crystal singularity, I'm going to punch another hole in the wall because there is one last thing that I want to accomplish today. And yet again, I don't know if this is going to be big or not, so if in doubt, always go bigger. Would you guys buy that if it was on a t-shirt? And the thing that we're going to be doing in this room is going to be this, the Cosmic Meatballs. I think it's going to be really easy to do, and I should have everything that we need, need here, so yeah, setting it up should be very easy. But usually when I say that, it's not, so 
here goes. All of this stuff right here is basically what we need to be able to make the cosmic meatballs. Now you can make the cosmic meatballs either in the extreme crafting table or you can use mechanical crafting from create. Thank you, because otherwise doing this manually, no, that's that's not satisfying. We need to do it, of course, automated, and that's what we're going to be doing. So, I have a 13 personal EM ceilings ready to generate all of this stuff, and I just hope that I can get my hands on all of it. So first things first, we need to place these mechanical crafters, and in fact, we need 13 mechanical crafters in total. So that means I can get rid of those five. And we're just going to be placing these, I think, in a... A uh, nine by nine configuration or three by three configuration. Sorry. So if we go like this, fly a bit here and place it like so. Uh, place another one and then another one like that. And then oh yeah, I need to configure the way that they are orientated. I think all I need to do is point this into here and point that into here. And then eventually the empty product is going to be right there. The finished product, aka the meatballs. And I should be able to put an advanced item collector up here. Just make sure that it's smaller so it doesn't interfere with anything else. So the item will pop here. This will pick it up. And there will be... Actually, we're going to pick it up first. Place this. And then we're going to take an end drawer. Place that on top. And then we're going to have the advanced item collector right here. Right, that is the configuration, I think. Next, we then need some pipes, and we're going to be using the Elite Logistical Transporters. And I'm just going to place them like this. And then I'm actually going to disconnect them from each other. And there we go. That lamp is actually going to be in the way, so let's put that in the corner instead. And yeah, now, well, I need to actually hook up the cogs for this, which we need to do with a water wheel, but I'll do that after. First, I'm going to try and get all of the items required that we actually need to generate. Hold on. Not yet. All right, so this is all the stuff that I have, and I'm missing raw pork chop, raw salmon, raw rabbit, puffer fish, and tropical fish. I really hope I don't have to go fishing. Well, I might be able to solve one of the requirements very easily. I am a professional Minecraft player. I promise this is what we do when we're waiting for things in Minecraft. We jump around aimlessly in loops, forgetting all about time and set. There we go. It's done. Perfect. Aha. So this is how you do it. You place an alchemy catalyst underneath the mana pool and then we get this. That is beautiful. So I should be able to do this. And so that is the salmon. And to get the tropical fish, I just drop in a salmon. And then that is the salmon and the tropical fish. And to get the puffer fish, we just drop one salmon in there. And boom, we should have a puffer fish somewhere. No, wait. Pop in salmon. So we get, oh no, uh, I think I'm good. Just put this in and we have one fish too much, essentially. Okay, good, that is the fish parts done. <laughs> okay, I figured it out, yay me. Didn't think I would be needing the alchemy table from extended exchange, but it is actually pretty cool. For example, I can put in a carrot. Uh, hold on, I am pretty sure, so I want a beetroot alchemy table. Uh, carrot, car, car, carrot, aha, antimatter relay next to the table and a yellow energy, energy, energy collector next to the relay and boom, beetroot has been created. <laughs> okay, that's actually pretty cool. Now I just need some essence buckets and I think that should be fairly easy to get. Where is our mob farm? I'm using it all for jelly babies, but I should be able to, if I just right click this enough, maybe, potentially. There we go, that's one. I just need to keep doing this until I have four in total. Finally, four fluid buckets, which means I can go ahead and make, oh, now I'm missing a carrot. <laughs> Waiting, waiting, and boom, carrot. Now I can go ahead and make this, which we now need to feed to a chicken. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna have to get a bunch of eggs. That where did my eggs go? Excuse me. There we go. 
get a bunch. Now I really hope this works on baby chickens. I don't know if it will. If it would just stand still, please. It doesn't. It doesn't. Grow, please grow, please grow, please grow. Please. 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 Five, four, three, two, one. Kitching? Yes. Happy birthday, Taco! What? Okay. Yep. That's that done. And I shouldn't really be leaving because the next step is actually to go ahead and uh, do that. And now just wait for a carrot rabbit to spawn. And just like that, we got a raw rabbit. Perfect. Recipe is complete. Uh, I don't know if it's a good idea to keep this here, but I'm just going to do it just in case I need something at any point. Okay, so we're going to do this very, very slowly here. So we're going to do... Uh, we're gonna do the top one last. We're gonna do this one here, and we're gonna set this to take, and then raw beef in there, and boom, raw beef has been inserted. Now I just need to keep doing this for, well, all of them, and add all the ingredients. There we go. All right, and now for the top one, we're not gonna be using this. We're gonna be using this. We're gonna set this here, and set the, set, set. Yeah. Why shoes, why don't you fly normally? Now I'm going to be taking a linking tool, go all the way up to second storage, store this frequency, place this frequency. Oh dear me, can I reach? Yes, beautiful. Now, all I need to do is to set up the water wheels. That should be easy. So the rod goes there, this goes into that, so this needs to go directly into water wheels starting here. We need three of them. I think this is the setup for it. I'm gonna place water there, there, and finally there. We're gonna ignore that spillage. We're gonna attach this rod here. Oh, oh, we're seeing it in action. Oh wow, we're already seeing it in action. Okay, I need to see this. So. Items should be put back into these as soon as this recipe is done. It's happening. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Why didn't that work? All right, I think I have it figured out now. So apparently I think the way that these has to be orientated is the way that the recipe itself is orientated in well, right here, the order basically, and I think this is going to work. Everything eventually compiling down to the final bit down here. If we take a look at the ultimate stew, it is the same here as well, I'm pretty sure. So let's take a look and see if this works. Need to set these to add to this, and boom, boom, boom. All the items are present very well, and I think then all I need to do is add a yeah. Mm -hmm. I need three gearboxes in total, like this, and then a cogwheel. Not in that orientation. And let's see if this now works. If it does, I'll be really happy. <laughs> but there's only one way to find out. All of these items need to come across. This stuff is waiting for this stuff to arrive. And then... It's all going to go down. <gasps> it's actually working. It's working, ladies and gentlemen. We got cosmic meatballs. Please get out of here. Yes! Our first cosmic meatballs. And we can actually eat these, surprisingly. And they're very, very good food. But we don't need that because we have magic. Ah, that's so nice. Ah, out of your reach. Well, let's fix this real quick. Gonna set you to whitelist to only pick up the cosmic meatballs. And boom. Perfect. Now all I need to do is pick up some glass, as is tradition, to decorate these. Place it like so. Just enough. And I also, while I remember, I do need to steal your frequency. Place all these. Perfect. Go all the way up to the tippity top and insert. 
No, that, that's not how you do it. You can do that back. And that's not right. Store frequency. Yes, perfect. Ah, we are much closer now to completion. Guys, I think that's going to be it for this episode. That is enough automation. We got the uranite singularity. We have the nitro singularity as well, currently brewing in here. Hopefully it will be done very, very soon. I need to install watches of flowing time on every single one of these uh, things, making singularities, just so we can have it happening a little bit faster. We now have cosmic meatballs as well. In the next episode, I think we will be focusing on the ethereal slate singularity, which is, I think, also going to be rather big. I've never used this bot before, so I need to do some research. And then at the very end, we, of course, have the ultimate still, which is going to be kind of like this, just... Uh, five times more complicated. So guys, I really hope you have enjoyed this episode. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and enable those notifications so you don't miss the next episode. And I hope to see you in the next one. My backpack is now literally full of, flow of watches flowing time. I should probably get to installing those. But anyways, hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a wonderful day, and until next time, goodbye.